Hello and welcome to this new video in the Wartech channel. I'm Kaltenstein and I'm to alone today. We'll be looking at something our German viewers already pretty much know. Um, you know and I, we spend an ungodly amount of time building elevators in the last few weeks. We had a pretty good one, but then we noticed that it was actually rotational. So we just sat down and said, okay, let's just make it better in every possible way, not just fix the rotationality. So what is this? You get two elevators. Uh, one of them has a special new feature. The other one um, is trimmed down from the original version to be as compact as possible. It is, as far as we can tell, alongside with our prototype, of course, uh, the first elevator that is fully enclosed and has controllable lighting inside its cabin. It has a three by three by two block cabin, pretty much a standard size for our elevators we had uh, built before. Yeah, but as far as we can tell, nobody in YouTube ever uploaded an elevator like this with a cabin enclosed, it's completely enclosed when the doors are closed. The doors will be moving together with the elevator. I can just show you real quick. To use the elevator, just press any button on the panel. Let's go to floor four. If the elevator is not already in the station, it will be called down. Then the lamps will show and always enter the elevator with the showing lamps. The other door will not be open anyway. The wait times can be a bit long, but you can actually uh, decrease the wait time in the delay in, in the control mechanics. Now the doors have closed and the elevator starts moving. As you can see, none of the walls seem to be moving because they all are part of the cabin. Door is open and you're here in floor number four. So what's special about this elevator? Well, as you can see, we do not use conventional flying machines. Instead, we have these climber motors that require a single redstone tick input every time they want to move up. So we've got these bubble columns here, which are centrally controlled by the tech down here. Basically what it means, the tech iterates by one block up and all the flying machines iterate one block at the same time. Same for the down one, which is this bubble column here. The two elevators communicate with each other so if you use this elevator to mainly go to floor number nine now the panel is locked into number nine you cannot change it right now until the elevator has departed and maybe at the same time we want to go from this floor to floor number two this elevator will be leaving now for floor number nine and the other elevator will be called down shortly to floor number two as you can see it is now departing its original station we'll come down here Open the door, as you can see the light has gone out, and now we can wait. We're in floor number two. It's that easy to use, it's basically foolproof. I can think of no scenario where the elevators will actually be confused because um, voyages cannot overlap. So um, if a request is filed via um, this huge wall, we've got a request line and a line for every station. If you press the button, a request will be sent down to handle the trip. It will end up down here, setting up this. If this line says that an elevator is available, an acknowledgement will be sent up. Then the station will return a message where it wants to go. First, it will send out the position where it is, and then the position where it wants to go. So you got two pulses for that. They will be decoded in this binary decoder matrix. Every station is assigned a 9-bit number. The first bit is always indication that there is a voyage at all and the other 8 bits are just the Y level of the station. So numbers from 1 to 128 added up, so you get 0 to 255 uh, blocks possible. We have displayed this in this map. Um, the right elevator is exactly the maximum amount of blocks tall, so the last station will have a full decoder matrix. As you can see, every observer is set. They can be individually arranged, so if you want to move a station, go right ahead, just paste the station in and enter the Y level of the station right here, as is done with the others. Then the elevator will decide which to use. If no elevator is busy, by default the left one will be used, unless the other elevator is already in your station, then it will be overridden and the elevator that's already in your station will be used. It's a very simple system. The two numbers for the origin and the destination are queued up here and are then transferred into this shift register for each elevator, depending on which one is used. Down here, the position of each elevator is tracked the numbers are deducted to ascertain which way to go and the appropriate number of steps is iterated on by the bubble columns. The next feature is of course the controllable lighting. As you can see right now, the light in this elevator is on. You just go down here, change the set of this copper bulb and the lights go out. Turn it on and the lights turn on again. It can be switched at any point. Of course, the elevators can only be changed in a station. So if you turn off the lights, the lights will only change state if the elevator is parked in the station and the system will just uh, wait for the elevator to be there. Now, how to set up a station? Very easy. You just use world edit and copy from here. 
put this gold block here. They can be stacked right on top of each other, as you can see. Um, this wiring belongs to the station above this one, and as you can see, none of the lines and pistons interfere with one another. Just paste it in anywhere you want. The only thing you need to change is this, uh, is this torch here. Um, basically, you have to assign a number to each station. Right now, we got numbers from 1 to 15. Um, place this torch wherever you want it to go. Uh, first of all, disable these observers here, otherwise there will be erroneous signals triggered and the elevators will go where you don't want it to go. Um, yeah, make sure every number is unique. So right now the system supports up to 15 stations over a range of 255 blocks, um, which in theory can be increased. I guess you could add another bit here, um, although you would run definitely run into some signal strength issues right now. This of course is a 15 signal strength line, so you would need to include a repeater somewhere. And also uh, the rails are at their maximum range, so um, you need to do something about that as well. In theory it's all doable. So right now we just chose the easiest version. Then also in theory you could expand on a queue. Right now all requests that are not handled by both elevators already, so if both are busy, the request will just not be acknowledged, so they will wait for the elevators to finish their jobs. Then only will this piston be unlocked, the acknowledgements can be sent, basically which means if there are if there are requests queuing up right here, they will be handled from bottom to top because these receivers here can only receive signals from below, of course, so the first one that is sent to that is set to receive will receive the signal. Those above will have to wait. Interesting bit of tech if you ever wanted to know how to build a bubble column with multiple exit points but only want to address one of them, this is how you do it. You basically have to shove um, you basically have to shove a soul sand block in and at the same time remove the water. The observers above that will not be triggered. So this is the improved version of the base elevator. Um, and this is something we added even in post, so our thinking was maybe you're using an office building or something where you want to have different companies, um, maybe you also want public spaces, basically anywhere where you want different uh, permissions to go places you want others not to go. Um, not just a strict hierarchy, so you got a boss and then maybe a lower level employee that can still go more places than general public, but really different systems of hierarchy where you need different permissions that are not overlapping with each other. So right now we got um, five permissions, one of them is the base permission. Maybe let's say you're in a gated community and those are the public spaces within, so you need the red car to go in. Um, but you can only go to the public places, which means they will not be checked inside the elevator. The elevator already assumes that you're in a red area, um, but we programmed it in any way because this is part of a larger system. Uh, then we've got four different perm levels, uh, which will be displayed on the wall. And then you've got the override. The override is something different, I'll get to you later. Um, so basically what you do is you just take a Schalke box, they, it has all the permissions inside. In theory you can make Schalke boxes in a way that you can't actually look at them and take them in or out. So you could make, um, with commands at least, uh, completely sealed key cards. You just place them in, do not press the button, it's just there for um, emergency purposes. It will kind of break the system if you actually do it. Um, so place the shulker inside. As you can see, all the permissions have activated. Every now we just wait for the items to get back in, as you can hear. And now we get shulker box back. And right now we can choose any station we want to. We were in a green area, and we can go to any red area, as they are the public ones, meaning we can go to green and red. And because we inserted our keycard, we can go to the other ones as well. So let's just go down one floor, leisurely stroll into the elevator. And here we are. As you can see right now, we're in a cyan area, but I actually forgot to program any second cyan area. Maybe I should have chosen one of the blue ones instead. Oh well, I just made a random distribution. Anyway, right now we're working for the cyan company, meaning no other one from the office building can go there. Vice versa for the green and red ones. Basically saying, okay, you got the red one in the lobby, maybe you got a restaurant and you got a viewpoint maybe upstairs. And all the rest can be uh, companies. Of course, you can distribute them um, as much as you like. Um, just look at this matrix, basically it uh, decides which, which floors are tied to any specific permission. And back here, every individual floor can be individually locked out. So if you can take a look right here, which is the control panel, you got of course the lightings and uh, you got each specific deck. Meaning if we were to say lock down deck D3, so the D permission and deck 3, and um, we're in deck two right now. Um, if I were to play the shulker box and not include the override.
As you can see, all permissions have activated except the one for D3, so even the other green permission still works. And of course we get back to Shulker Box, and now we, well, we need to go somewhere, let's go to deck number 4. As I said, the right elevator usually isn't the default one, but because this one is in a specific station we are in, it will be chosen instead. Right. So this is it for the functionality. One more thing I wanted to say is that if you want to program in a new station, make sure you get the right amount of Y-level blocks. Basically what you do is you just select this with word edit, say it says uh, 59 right now, so 59 blocks between those, but you have to deduct one to, um, because the old uh, fence posts and fence boards problem. Basically if you enter 59, it's one block too much, the elevator um, will miss the station by one block, so just enter 58, enter that to binary converter online and read the, read the number backwards to front, um, because right now we got the one on the left and the 128 on the right, of course, if you write down a, a number, uh, the leftmost bit will of course be the highest bit. And then of course enter enter the number here. Um, as I said, don't forget to place the observers in the first bit as well, otherwise it won't be registered as a station. So what's the use case of this elevator and why am I even making this video? Well, this is not the fastest elevator in the world, there are much much faster elevators, but as far as I can tell, anyone who has published an elevator on YouTube, as far as I could see, I searched many terms for it, please correct me if I'm wrong. But I think that Yoyo and I created the first ever elevator with a fully enclosed cabin and controllable lighting in Minecraft. Also I think we created the first computer controlled elevator because technically, yes it is an, uh, it's a binary computing system here and it uses binary adders or subtractors I should say. Which of course has the huge advantage of providing a relatively minimal footprint in the upper floors as you, because most elevators that have uh, individual floor selection will be much much larger in their stations. Um, because they try to cram in all the tech into one station. Right now we have an elevator that's suitable for a slim tall building. Um, where you can basically put all the relevant tech in the basement. So most office buildings will probably have a basement when you build them. Maybe you got a parking garage or something. Of course you don't need cars in Minecraft, so just use the space under the building um, yeah, for this big computer down here. And that I think it's quite suitable for tall buildings because there is no delay in communication time. The delay is consistent between all floors because we're using instant wiring via these bubble columns and walls. So why am I making this video in English then? Well. This is our official submission to the Crafty Masterman Redstone Rewards 2025. If you don't know what it is, please check it out. It's a nice, it's a really nice show. It was really funny the last two years. And um, yeah, it's also a charity. So if you have the money to spare, just uh, help them raise money for a good cause. Um, I think it's really nicely done. We also entered one of our war guests, of course, but the show doesn't really fit this. So Julian, I thought, well, we built this elevator basically just for fun and had no use case. So maybe now it has a use case. Um, also, you can download this elevator in the description below, I'll put just a Google Drive link. Um, you get this map with both of them. Be careful when copying them, I had some major problems with uh, my fast as in world edit. Just don't use regular world edit because all the observers will update, it's a horrible thing. I got so used to um, working on a server that working in single player became absolutely horrible. Just make sure all the NBT data has been copied so I had some of the signs um, didn't have any text, I thought, hmm, okay, something's wrong with the NBT data. But then, of course, everything stopped working uh, because there were missing buckets inside the dispensers and something. Okay, so if you have problems, check if there are buckets inside the dispensers or check if you maybe copied it while it was uh, shifting the shift register, then sometimes the pistons or the um, or the comparators can seize up. I had that problem. Something When something works in the development world and you copy it over to another world, please make sure that it works. And lastly, if you have any further questions, check in the manual, of course. Quick explanation of all the features. Also, it explains how to set up a new station exactly. If you have any more questions, ask in the comments or join our Discord server in the description below. Um, I'm Pellenstein. This build was made by Yuri now and I, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye.